In this video, we're going to have a look at viewports within games. In particular, how we can have notionally a, a game world, an environment that we only get to see a small portion of it on screen at any one point in time. And it will be through the viewport that that determines the bit of the screen that gets to be um, displayed. So it's a very many sense, it does actually offer, if you like, a window, a conceptual window into our, our game world. There's a few things here, though, that make it um, complex, slightly complex, and we'll want to have a look at some of them uh, within this particular um, uh, talk. In terms of a concept, first of all, so you can see it here, a viewport is a window into a game world, nothing more than that. Any objects that fall within that window we want to draw, and I suppose then by implication, if an object doesn't fall within the window, we don't want to bother trying to draw the thing. So it, it'll be there for efficiency saving as well. Generally, the viewport is something that can be moved by the player. Um, different ways of doing this, the player may have certain controls they can use to change the viewport's position and size. Alternatively, the viewport may be actually fixed to the character. And as the character moves, the viewport moves always to keep them in view so the player can, can continually see them within the, the game world. There's different ways in which we can define a viewport. And this is important whenever we get down to the level of, of coding it. So you can see a, a graphic here where we have um, sort of a Mario-esque game where we are displaying a rectangular region, and that is to represent our viewport, uh, the thing that is displayed on the screen. And whatever is displayed or viewable within that viewport gets to be rendered on screen. So how we could we do it? Here's one way. We could, and basically this comes down to different ways you can use to represent a rectangle. There's no one correct way, there's lots of different ways you could do it. One is by having, for example, two points, the top left and bottom right corners, of the rectangle. Uh, another way is to have a center point where the rectangle is centered and then to have the width and the height of the, the viewport. They're, they're both equivalent. Um, admittedly, I, I tend to prefer thinking of having a center point where the viewport is along having a width and a height. And that's what I've, I've sort of assumed in the, the some of the algorithms that we'll have a look at within this particular talk. Um, the broad notion is that if something falls within the viewport, and you can see here Mario is partially within the viewport, then we want to draw. It doesn't have to be fully within it, but as long as we've got a bit of an object within the viewport, we want to draw that bit of the, the object. Um, different ways we can look at that. So again, we've got, uh, we're have got we assuming we've got a character, has a X and Y location, has a height and a width. And we'll also you know, effectively then use the same representation for our viewport, that uh, both the case in terms of the viewport and in terms of our game objects, we say they're represented as a position in space with a width and a height. Now, if you give that set up, so effectively these are two rectangles, and I want to work out if the, let's say the Mario rectangle um, either is contained within or intersects with the viewport, then I can do it as shown here. So effectively, this is four conditions, and if all true, of, all of the four of them are false, um, or true actually, then we say that it is visible. And if any of them are false, then it is not visible. Mario isn't found within it. So we'll have a look at these. Uh, take the first one. So if Mario.x, so the center point of Mario, take away half of Mario's width. That is another way of saying, go to the middle point of Mario, then go back along the x-axis, half of its width. That brings us to the left-hand side of Mario. So if the left-hand side of Mario is less than or equal to the centre point in the viewport, half-half of the width, so that is the right-hand side of the viewport. So if the left-hand side of Mario is less than or equal to the right-hand side of the viewport, um, then we are saying it is potentially visible. It'll be a pass on that particular requirement. And the other ones have to be true as well for it to be sure that it's visible. Now that makes sense. Now, it can be a bit hard to get your head around this, but let's, let's take that top statement. If the left-hand side of Mario is less than or equal to the right-hand side of the viewport. And I want you to imagine, well, 
If that's not the case, if that is false, what does it mean? And it is false, in other words, is not visible, if the left-hand side of Mario, so you look at Mario's left-hand side, if it is greater than, so our x-axis is pointing it to the right, is greater than the right-hand side of the viewport. And if you imagine any situation where Mario's left-hand side is after the right-hand side of the viewport, there's no way it's visible. It's, it's off to the right-hand side of the viewport. can't possibly be visible. So if the inverse is true, then we definitely know it's not visible. Now, simply saying on its own that the left-hand side of Mario is less than the right-hand side of the viewport, it means that it might be, because that, that, it, it is a condition under which it might be true. And you go through the other ones as well. So, for example, the second line says that if the right-hand side of Mario is greater than the left-hand side of the viewport, then he too also might be visible. You still think about this, but, well, what if that's not the case? If we say that the right-hand side of Mario, so look at Mario's right-hand side, if it is less than, so it's before, the left-hand side of the viewport, then there's no way it's possibly visible. So these four and conditions basically tie Mario down so that some portion, if not all of Mario, is visible on the screen. And we can use that simple test as a way of working out if a game object is uh, overlaps with the, the viewport. And that's our initial um, test to see if we're going to draw objects, either to reject them or to go through and actually to, to draw them. So what follows? We're going to assume that we've done that test and we've worked out that, yes, Mario is visible, and we want to actually draw it. Now, here there be monsters. Um, sadly, if this is going to get a little bit complex, and there's a few unfortunate things that make it more complex than really it ought to be. So what's going to cause the complexity? Uh, here we have, actually, is a screenshot from the Android uh, Rectangle um, class. So this, this is as, as well as when I took the snapshot, is what the text was in, in the, the Android class. So rec holds four integer coordinates for a rectangle. The rectangle is represented by the coordinates of its four edges, top, uh, left, top, right, and bottom. These fields can be accessed directly. Use width and height to retrieve the rectangle's width and height. Note, most methods do not check to see that the coordinates are sorted correctly, i.e. left, left, and right, and top, left, and equal to bottom. So that's the description. And if you think about this, it's curious. In particular, that note is curious. In particular, the final bit is curious. So left is less than or equal to right. Now, let's say take the number three, that it should be less than or equal to, for example, the number five. That's okay, three is a smaller number, you expect it to be on the left, five is a bigger number, you expect it to be on the right. That's okay. Top is less than or equal to bottom. That's counterintuitive. If you imagine the top of a rectangle, you imagine that it has a bigger coordinate than the bottom, but that's not what it's saying here. The top of a rectangle here has a smaller coordinate than the bottom. The reason they do this here is we've got to remember that even though we're maybe imagining this in our head, where x points out to the right and positive y points up the screen, if we're talking about graphics, or origin, 0, 0 is the top left, positive x will be to the right, positive y points down the screen. So in that sense, if we're looking at a rectangle on the screen, the top of that rectangle, from our point of view, the visual top, will have a y-coordinate that is smaller than the y-coordinate of its bottom, because positive y points down the way. So we, we need to bear that in mind in the algorithms that we're going to do. Um, it makes it a little bit more complicated, but basically it just means we're, we're swapping some of the comparisons around at key points. Now, we will be looking uh, in the demo a little bit more about this, but I just want to go through the process here um, quite quickly. Now, for us to, uh, we're, we're assuming that our initial test has been true, that we know that Mario is either fully or partially within the viewport. What we want to do is to work out which bit of Mario is within the viewport. Then from that, to work out which bit of the image we want to draw. And then finally, to work out which bit of the screen we want to draw to. So there's actually three things here. 
we notionally have a world or game world and we say that objects exist within that world they'll have a certain size and they'll have a certain position and our viewport has a certain size and has a certain position and we want to work out which bit of the objects fit within that now that'll give us a certain rectangular region when we're drawing that out we will probably have a bitmap that we're using to draw that out and that bitmap, it might have a small resolution, it might have a big resolution. <clears throat> but in essence, we want to take the notionally the, the game object rectangle, the bit that's visible, and to work out how much of the bitmap does that correspond to. Now, we're going to be drawing this onto a screen. The screen could have a low resolution or could have a high resolution. So when we're drawing it onto the screen, we want to work out the actual screen rectangle, number of pixels on the screen, that we will be copying our source rectangle, the bitmap, into. So it, it, it's complicated in terms of the three different processes, and we'll see the mapping that we have to do herein. So the first one is working out which region image falls within the, the viewport. Now, we do this because if it's partially within the viewport, let's be nice and we'll only draw out the bit that falls within as opposed to trying to draw out all of the image. Now, how do you do this? There's a few things. So the source X, this is our starting X. And remember, here we are creating a rec. So this is the Android rectangle, and we have to make sure that our, our top is less than or equal to our bottom. So we've got to remember to swap those things around. But for x and y, for the x coordinate, it was the same as before. So the source x, or starting x, and where uh, 0 is over on the left-hand side. Now, you can see here it is the maximum of 0 or some calculation. The reason we're doing this is that if Mario starts, the left-hand side of Mario is, is within the viewport, is visible, then we want to start drawing from position zero. If Mario, as is shown here on this image, starts outside of the viewport, then we don't want to start drawing from Mario's zero X position because that's outside. We want to increase the X position until it just falls within the viewport. To do it, we're doing a calculation. So it's view x minus half of the width. So that is the left-hand side of the viewport. And we're taking away from that Mario's left-hand side. Okay? So let's, let's think about this here. Let's assume that our viewport starts at position 100. And as we have on the screen here, um, we have Mario starting, let's say, at position 90. So in this sense, we say 100 take away 90, which is 10. So the correct starting position for us is 10 in in terms of the, the width. So that we will not begin from zero. We will start drawing from Mario at position 10 because 10 units are off the image. We don't need to draw those. Let's assume that Mario is fully within the viewport. So imagine the image we're seeing here. Let's shift Mario along. So again, viewport, uh, left-hand side of position 100. Let's assume Mario starts at position 130. In that sense, we would be saying 100 minus 130. So that would give us an answer of minus 30. And this is where the max comes in then. So a max of 0 or minus 30 will be 0. So if Mario starts within the viewport, then we will set our source x to be 0. A small calculation enables us to work out where we draw our, our, our coordinate from. We're doing more or less exactly the same thing with the y-axis in terms of comparing the top and the bottom. But because we have that additional constraint that top has to be less than or equal to bottom, we're swapping the two things around uh, in terms of the, the comparison of the, the top of it. Um, so it's the exact same calculation except mindful of the fact y, positive y points down. But we'll calculate that one. Then we calculate the, the width, uh, source width and the source height. Uh, done in a similar way. So the maximum width that we have is we draw all of the image. Um, if in the earlier step we decide that we only need to draw part of it, we do that at the start. So Mario.width minus source x, that gives us the amount of Mario that we can potentially draw. Uh, so if we chopped off a bit at the start because it fell outside, then we, we will reduce the amount we can potentially draw. The minus max something checks to see does any of Mario fall over the right hand side of the viewport so it's not visible off the right hand side and it's exactly the same type of calculation where if mario does fall off the right hand side we truncate that bit as well so basically we calculate the source width we calculate the source height 
and that will give us in terms of our game world coordinates how Mario is visible within the game. So useful to think about that just to get your head um, around it. Let's assume we do this and we have a rectangle then in terms of our game world that tells us which bit of Mario is visible. The next thing we want to do is to build a source rectangle for the source bitmap. Now, the reason we do this, you need to get your head mind this here. So we might have a world. My world could be a thousand units wide and Mario could be 10 units wide and 20 units high. So from my, when I'm thinking about Mario in the world, I could say, yeah, Mario's 10 by 20 or one by two or whatever size I want it to be. I could have a bitmap. Now that bitmap could be 600 pixels by 400 pixels, just depends on the size of it. But I want to take the region, the game object region of Mario, and then to map that onto the bitmap. So normally I'm making it bigger to accommodate the fact that I probably have a, a reasonable pixel density for Mario's bitmap. So the thing we're doing down at the bottom is working out the X and Y scaling between the image, so how many pixels wide the image is, and how wide Mario is in game world space. So Mario might only be 10 units in my world, um, but I might have a bitmap that's 600 pixels wide. So that gives us a scaling between game world coordinates and bitmap coordinates. So I do the scaling for the X and the Y, we see that down at the bottom, and then I'm going to my source rectangle and I'm simply applying that scaling. So I take exactly the same bitmap that I had and I scale it up so now that it maps onto my source bitmap, the one I have that I can draw information from. And at that point, I've taken what is game coordinates and convert them into, if you like, source coordinates for our bitmap. Having done that, we're nearly there. We need to then work out which part of the screen do we draw to. And this actually is, is a similar setup. So we will have thought about it in terms of our world coordinates, uh, that, that Mario is a certain width and a certain height. Equally, the screen will have a certain width and a certain height in terms of pixels. And we're doing exactly the same type of comparison again. So in this sense, we're doing the scaling between the width of the screen, how many pixels wide our screen is, and the width of our viewport in terms of our game world coordinates. That gives us our scaling between the game world and the screen. And we then do effectively for our destination rectangle, similar types of calculations. And you can see them here where we work out the starting X and Y coordinate on the screen, mindful that zero, zero is uh, top left and we move down. And we work out the width and the height by applying that scaling. Now, at this particular point, we, we've done all of our work. We've, um, we've worked out if it's visible, the game area that's visible, the region of the bitmap we want to draw, and the region of the screen that we want to draw to. Um, we can just you know, simply draw it out at that point. So summary, work out if the game object falls within the viewport. This is done in terms of our game object coordinates. If it does, then work out which region of the bitmap that we have available for that object we should draw. And then following on from that, go to the screen, work out what resolution the screen is, and then the region of the screen that we're drawing that bit of the bitmap to. And those steps then follow through. So a little bit of complexity, but it's worthwhile just getting your head around. We're mapping from one, um, if you like, coordinate space into another coordinate space. Other thing that, um, sad to say, there's lots of things that can complicate this, but another thing that can potentially add complexity is the fact that on mobile uh, devices, phones and tablets, there can be a range of different aspect ratios. So the ratio of the width divided by the height can differ. And you can see a few of them here from a, from a 4.3, sort of an old TV style one, to a 16.9, which is sort of more common for widescreen um, uh, monitors or TVs. There isn't, um, there's a few common sizes, but for example, 4.3, um, old style TV, also some of the the, sort of, uh, the iPads and so on, they, they use that format as well. They actually have 3.2 format, so for example, Microsoft Surface is 3.2 format. And a lot of Android devices, some PC screens, 16.10, 16.9 in terms of the aspect ratio. So a wide range of them is available. And if we're creating a game, quite often we want it, well, not quite often, we, we do want it 
presumably, to run on as many different devices as possible. That may be through the um, Apple's store or through Android's store. Um, and, and again, we wanted to work on a wide range of devices. So we need a way of dealing or handling this. Um, the aspect ratio, it does have an important influence in the game because it will determine just how much of the world is visible. So here you can see in the green rectangle in the middle sort of a 3-2 aspect ratio. The red 16-9 has sort of extra vertical bars down the side that are visible. And for the 4-3 we've got bars at the top and the bottom in terms of extra real estate um, that is visible as well. So as the aspect ratio changes, the amount of your world that is visible also changes. Thankfully, there, there's, there's an easy rule of thumb to use. If you assume a 3-2 aspect ratio, that's your sort of base default, and you design your game so that it runs in a 3-2 aspect ratio, it'll probably work out well for you. Why is it well? Because if we have a 4-3, it just means we get a bit extra space at the top and the bottom. And if we have, for example, a 16-10 or a 16-9, we just get a bit extra space on the sides. So we still have that one core region, or 3-2 aspect region, and then depending on the actual device, well, we might not have anything, or we might have extra bars in the top or the bottom available for us. So generally, designed for 3-2. And if you're thinking about game world coordinates, uh, 480 by 320 or 320 by 480, these, these are not pixel densities on screen. These are like logical units that you play your game in. That's fairly common. So we could have a 480 by 320 view into a world that is 2,000 units wide, where Mario, for example, is, is 20 units wide and 40 units high. And, and that'll, you know, th th these are sort of your game world coordinates. Now, having done that, um, you're still faced with the question of, OK, I'm presenting it for 3.2. I'm running an actual device that has a different uh, aspect ratio. What do I do about it? Again, there's a range of choices. So I could scale it. Um, so again, if you're looking at the image in, in, the, in the top right-hand side of the screen, we've now scaled it to a 4-3 aspect ratio, so it looks slightly stretched and all of the graphics get slightly stretched. You could do that. We'll get the game looking a little bit bad. I could simply put in black bars, so I display nothing in those additional regions, just keep them black. And again, you could do that. It, it may be a bit better than scaling, but still you're sort of not using the full real estate that's available. Or alternatively, you could actually resize the viewport. So you could say, I'm going to always display my core 3.2 region because I've designed it for that. But I'll make my uh, screen viewport a bit bigger to reflect the aspect ratio I'm looking at. So there you actually get to see more of your, your world. More of the world is actually visible. Um, up to you. Swings and roundabouts. So if you're using black bars, at least you're certain that the same information is going to be displayed irrespective of platform, and that sometimes can be important. Um, you know, it, it really sort of depends on what's right for, for your particular um, game. Key takeaways in this, reasonably straightforward. So, I mean, the, the viewport is, is the thing that determines which bit of your world gets to be um, displayed. It's simple in principle. There's a few things, for example, the, the fact that rectangles tops less than the, the, the top, the, you know, tops less than equal to the bottom, uh, and the fact that we have to sort of convert from our game world coordinates uh, into the bitmap coordinates into screen coordinates means we're doing a little bit of mathematical manipulation from one coordinate space into another, but it adds up in terms of complexity. Nonetheless, very useful things if you have a world which is bigger than the screen and you only want to see a particular bit of the, the screen overall.